I think people are very familiar with the concept that you know your genes don't determine everything about you. It's not the whole story. Uh, I'm Brad Bernstein. I'm the uh, co-director of the epigenomics program at the Broad. The epigenomics is the you know the, the field that seeks to understand how this this information can can give rise to so many different different cell types, different phenotypes. You know the concept of the epigenome is you know partly functional and partly structural. Right, the the, the DNA in a in a single cell is about two meters long if one stretched it end to end. Yet it needs to fit into a nucleus that's about the size of the head of a pin. The genome to fit into the nucleus is organized, uh, it's actually wrapped around these little spools. They're proteins that, that, that you just wrap the DNA around and this forms uh, spools. This is chromatin, so when you think about those, those spools and how they organize together in the nucleus, this is chromatin. Um, different cell types have different chromatin structures and different chromatin organizations and they control how the DNA, you know, which genes and which parts of the DNA are active when and where and which cell type um, and that's the epigenome. I think it's incredibly important to comprehensively describe the organization of the genome in every cell type. It gives you a map, and with that map, one can begin to understand what is driving these different cell types. And I give the example of a, of a skin cell or a muscle cell, but maybe more important would be, you know, what about a cancer cell that has a, you know, uh, an aberrant epigenomic state? You know, you, here you really need to understand you know, what's causal and what's driving the tumor um, and you know, the map's one step to get you there. We have a lot of really terrific postdocs and uh, physician scientists, very senior in, in the group and in the epigenomics program, um, and, and they have sort of taken these tools that we've developed over the last five or ten years and they're, they're bringing them to bear on some of their most interesting problems or some of the most pressing problems, in particular in oncology. For example, in glioblastoma, 97% of the cells make up the bulk of the tumor, but they not, might not be what's driving the tumor. It's that other 3% of cancer stem cells, if you will, that have a completely different epigenetic state. And we're just able to now, through the tedious work, uh, characterize that cancer stem cell population in terms of their epigenetics. Um, and then maybe learn, so, learn enough about this population to come up with some therapeutic strategies. I'm really excited about the potential of some of the studies going on in the lab or that we you know, interact with uh, collaborators on for, for eventually making it into the clinic. We have collaborations in, you know, in cancer and immunology and uh, a whole range, of neuropsychiatric disease, um, you know, uh, metabolism, I could really go on and on. Um, at how the field of epigenomics is now touching upon so many areas. Again, a great reason to be at the Broad because, you know, the world expert is either on your same floor or maybe upstairs.